Well, it's lovely to see you, Fuad, and 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 I'm delighted that you're back. And I know that I speak on behalf of all the Lan fans. Just pleased to see you back in a Lan shirt. I imagine though those seven games were like an age for you, weren't they? Yeah, um, I think I got quite lucky in the sense that this season is is different to the others. Whereas there was a game on a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, so it was about three and a half, three and a half, four weeks uh, without playing. Whereas usually it would probably have been about two months. Um, so I'm I'm pleased with that. And but it's it's always it's always it's not a great feeling being away from the game and playing matches. And and obviously I love football and I love playing football. So. Once that was taken away from me, uh, I, 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 it was a tough. It was tough for me to deal with personally and to deal with mentally. But I knew I had to keep putting the work in while I was out. So whereas when I'm back ready, I, I can go straight back in. But um, yeah, tough lesson learned. But never going to happen again. I know speaking to Tien, and he said you worked so brutally hard over those kind of four weeks. But did it take you more about a week kind of to get your head around what had happened? Yeah, it took me. It took me two or three days to get my head around. I was very, very down because it was a new experience for me. Um, it, it's not a thing I've ever been done or been involved in. And um, uh, it was just a moment of madness and it, it, it's it's not me, but these things happen. I'm still young and I'm still learning the game. And, and, and I think the, them experiences stand to you in the, in the long run. Um, but during the three, four weeks I was off, I knew I had to do things much more than I than what we would what we'd usually do in training because I'm, I'm I have to be able to replicate matches and, and and condition my legs for when the matches come back around and um I was doing double sessions I was doing sessions on my own coming in on days off and stuff like that but that's just the job of a professional footballer these things are expected and these things are non-negotiable so it's it's nothing extraordinary it's just something that I take pride in it's funny because watching you play, I sometimes think you're brilliant about not falling into traps. You don't get booked very much. And I think you've only been sent off once before for Lan at Carrick in the in the first season you were here. So that's what surprised me about that whole situation because you're really good about getting yourself out of those situations. Yeah, um, a lot of teams um, obviously uh, target me and, 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 and um, foul me and stuff like that to try and get me off my game. But it, it's something that I know comes with, 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 with playing for Lan and... and, and um, um, but it's a thing where I, I I can't even explain what happened. Like it was literally just a moment of madness. And when people say these things have happened to other players in the past, and and they say it's a moment of madness, you're like, how could you do that? But then when you actually experience it yourself, you do know that like these things just happen. And it was just literally, I just literally blurred blurred out for for like five five seconds, and 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 the action happened, and and then I was obviously sent off, but uh, and rightly so, but. It's like I said, it's an experience that will stand to me, and uh, I know that it's an experience I never want to feel again, so it won't be happening anytime soon. And looking back at it with more more lightly, I mean, I when it happened, I didn't know what happened, and then someone said it was a headbutt, but you, you have to climb a ladder to get to the head to have inflicted <laughs> some sort of pain there. Yeah, I think it was a, more of a chest butt than a head butt, uh, but. Yeah, um, I spoke to a couple of the lads, and apparently that's what the the player that it was against is known for, and and he set a trap, and I fell into it, and he he's he's street smart, and he he's he's been in the game a long time, and um, like I said, all this is a new experience for me, and um, it's one it's one that I don't think will ever happen again, but um, like I said, if I didn't experience it now, I probably would experience it at a more critical time, and that would be. Um, that wouldn't be great, but yeah, I think it stands, it stands you in pretty good stead, doesn't it? Really, now going forward, oh, it's, definitely. It's like, you know, you draw a line, don't you? Definitely, and and it was it was a lesson for me and uh, a test of my character and a test of um, me my mental strength because it's tough not playing games and it's tough um, not being able to help the team and stuff like that, especially when we're not winning games and stuff like uh, stuff like that, but. Like I said, the boys have done well in the past seven games. They've done reasonably well, so I'm not too down about that because uh, it would be a different story if we went through like a bad, another rough patch, and 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 then you feel like it's it's your fault that these things are happening and you're not out there to help the boys. But it'll definitely stand to me in good stead, and it's a definitely an experience that, it, although at that moment in time I didn't really want it, uh, I think it's an experience that it's 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 a good one. It's a bad experience, but it has good benefits as well. Uh, yeah, I think speaking to people at kind of all levels of football, especially over in this country, most managers will say that teams will go through a blip because this is a season like no other with the no fans thing, with the, the amount of games you play. And it, it, the, the table at the moment is bearing that out. And hopefully 
fingers crossed, touch wood and all those things. Lana have had their blip, but I think everyone is. When you look at that table, suddenly you're back into it. Yeah, uh, two games ago, two games ago, we when we lost to Coleraine, we were we were nearly sixth, and now we're 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 pushing for second. So it's it's a mad league, like it's 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 a league like no other before, and like no other year before, and then. Um, it's good to be involved in, like, because you know you have to be on your game every week. Because you drop even one, you even draw a game, and, and somebody is right up, right up behind you. And, and and we just need to, we've carried a bit of momentum now with the two games on the bounce and not losing in eight games. But um, hopefully that momentum carries on to the split, and then we can finish the season as strongly as possible. And our objective that we set on the season is still reachable. It's still, it's still definitely. Um, uh, attainable for us. So we will try our best to achieve that. And it's funny from a fan's point of view, it almost seemed like every mistake was punished properly, either with a red card in your case or, or, or a goal in some other people's case. I mean, look at the game against Porter down the other night. Suddenly, some of those moments weren't quite as catastrophic as they have been. Yeah, I, I, football is a mad game and, and it's, 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 it's crazy how things happen because if, if we were still in that rough patch that we were in, I, I can guarantee that goal would have went in. The, the, some of the hairy moments we have we had yesterday would have went in. Um, but when you win games, these these bits of luck just fall free, and these moments just just fall free, and 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 we not say we got out of jail because we completely dominated the, dominated the game, especially in the first half. But um, teams like Porter down, any team can punish in this league if you have a lapse of covers, concentration. Um, but thank God we didn't get punished, and thank God we got the three points because it's, it's a difficult place to go. And not only that, a goal from Ronan, like only he can score at the moment. By the way. Well, yeah, some hit. Like, to be fair, like there was no doubt in my mind that was a shot because he does it all the time in training. And he's just very off the cuff and he just does things like that that no other other players wouldn't think of doing. Um, he backs himself and he's a he's a he's a he's a player with loads and loads of ability and um, um, he's still young. He's still learning and um, if he had a bit more consistency and and he can really be a top 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 player. I was going to say the frustration, certainly from watching from the sidelines, and you've done that over the last kind of seven games, is the domination of games without maybe sometimes the cutting edge when you need it. Because you, you, you're blowing people away with possession and what you do in the, in the first two thirds. Add that with the final third and suddenly you've not got a problem, have you? Yeah, um, we're a possession-based team. We, we like to get the ball down and play and move it around. And um, maybe we haven't scored as many goals as we'd wanted this year. And um, But um, we, we, we know if we keep getting in them positions to score goals that um, more than likely they will come. Um, or you just need to carry the momentum that that, that we, we've created in the past two games. And, and hopefully that gives us the confidence that, that when we do get chances in the future that we put them away. Uh, one thing that does, does look to have returned over the last three or four games is the intensity. I mean, I don't know if that's borne out by the stats, but it certainly looks as though everyone's running better than they were maybe when things were, were stickier. Definitely, um, everybody's everybody knows this is the business end of the season, and everybody's uh, pushing each other because everybody wants to play. So um, nobody wants to have bad games where they're out of the team because these are the best, these are the biggest games of the season coming up. Um, so I think that and the competition aspect of, of getting in the starting eleven has driven boys on to run more, to to sprint more, and stuff like that, which is a credit to the boys, and 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 and, and it's good to see because competition is always healthy. Um, but yeah, our intensity has definitely gone up and stepped up. Um, Gaffer talks about hitting a reset in, uh, in the past two games, and I think we definitely have in terms of our work ethic and our work rate. And um, if you combine that work rate and work ethic and, and, and hunger with our ability and football and ability on the ball, and then that's only a recipe for success, in my opinion. The other thing that Tinan talks about is a kind of leadership team within, within a team, and I know you're part of that. Has that helped with the kind of communication behind the scenes? Yeah, um, it definitely has because when we were going through our rough patch, we were trying to put, our, we were all scratching our heads trying to put a finger on what had gone wrong in the sense that we were brilliant in the first 12 games and in the next 10 games, we were a shadow of ourselves and um, we decided that um, we let standards drop, uh, we let things slip, we, 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 we weren't as disciplined as we were in, in, in the earlier stages of the season and then these things happen um, and but once you learn from them and we know that that's never going to happen again that the stands are going to be right up through the roof all the time now because you know we now know from experience that when we do let standards drop and we do let things slip away and aren't demanding more of each other that these things happen and you don't win football games even though it might sound mad that how can things like that affect you on a football pitch but they do they, they and we have first-hand experience of it so 
Um, like I said, uh, another experience that we'll learn from and, and, and hopefully stands in good status in the future. There's an argument to say that I know you didn't want your red card and, and certainly you'd have preferred to play, but you might be fresher come the business end of the season because of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, when I was out uh, of the team, I was I was I was working very hard to to condition myself to keep fit, keep as fit as possible in terms of when I'm do when I am called upon again to play that I'm ready and there's no excuses of all oh, it's lack of fitness or anything like that because um, I know um, the way I play my game I need to be fit and the way the fitness is a huge uh, part of my game and stuff like that so I knew I need I needed to be that but there's no f- Fit, fitness in all the training you can do that could replicate a game so um, just looking forward to get back into the games and then uh, hopefully um, finish the season very very strong um, very happy to be back and very very happy to, to be able to contribute to the team again but it swung so quickly I mean as you said you know people are saying well we need them to be top six but but suddenly people can see Europe as well I mean that, that shows you the kind of narrow margins right now doesn't it yeah and we're on the borderline of both um, so but this is what top teams, this is what being a top team is about. Um, these pressure moments and these make or break moments. And, and it's an it's a opportunity that we have to relish, that we can't shy away from because this is what we wanted. This is what we want to experience. This is the positions we wanted to be in at the start of the season. And if somebody had said to you at the start of the season, third with nine games to go, you, you would have took it. Or fourth, sorry, with nine games to go, you would have took it. And two points off, three points off second, you would have definitely took it. So, um like I said, um, it, it, this experience is it, it's a good one and it, it's not one that we're going to shy away from and we're going to go to the very end and see where it takes us. And I imagine in some ways Linfield coming to Inver is, is something you just relish, bearing in mind they've left the place the last two occasions heavily beaten. Yeah, um, it's always a good game against the, the Linfield and um, they're a very good team. They, they know how to win games. They just have that know-how of winning games, winning tough games, winning crunch games. And, and that's what they've did. And that's why they've won so many leagues in the past and stuff like that. It's just ingrained in their DNA. Um, but it, it, that's the type of DNA that we want at our club. And we want to be able to win games, win these big, big crunch games. And um, these 50-50 games, that, as people call it, and you, when you come out on top, that's what really says a lot about you in the type, in terms of the type of team you're on. If you're a top team, you win these games and that's just no qualms about that. And um, that's what we want to do. And we want to show that we're a top team and we want to show that our ambitions will be, we'll, we'll try our best to fulfil them. But I've almost watched that kind of fear factor disappear um, when, you, when you have these big teams come. It's an excitement, it's an anticipation, but you don't think you're second best. No, um, I think on our day, we'd, we, we'd beat any team in the league. Um, we don't fear any team. I don't think the Gaffers ever, ever set us up in a, in a way to say, oh, we're even going to go for a draw. Never mind. Uh, we're going to contain. Um, so we always want to try and win every game possible. Um, it's a big game. It's a it's one that uh, that's going to be watched by everybody and stuff like that. So um, um, all I can say is bring it on. And, and I sometimes think you're better against the better teams in terms of the teams that don't try and shut you down, that you can play against and you know you're going to get a game of football against. Yeah, I, I think so, because these teams have to go for it as well because they, they can't see be seen as sitting in or, or not attacking and stuff like that. And they, they know they have to go for it as well. And when the games are like that, you enjoy them more because it's 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 there's a more of a top process in behind trying to break a team down. Um, and, and then that's when you might give a few balls away and then that's when frustration kicks in. Whereas these games, both teams are going for it. Both teams want to win and, and, and it creates a very open game. And they're the games that everybody wants to play in. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. I just want to ask you a final thing about, about Monday, which is an important day in terms of Ramadan. I, I mean, I know you've played football long enough as a Muslim to be kind of aware mm. of what that means. But it's mm. not easy, that balance, is it? Uh, no, I've only ever experienced Ramadan in season once um, uh, when I was playing for bowls. And it was very, very tough. Like um, um, the, the, the our training sessions are... are, are hard enough as it is with nutrition and food in your system never mind none so but in, I'm a Muslim I'm a devout Muslim and it's a thing that I have to do and I'm, I'm devoted to the cause and I know it's, I'm not going to use it as an excuse as to for anything as oh, I'm low on energy here I'm not I have to be professional enough to 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 be able to do it while I'm playing football it's because it's, it's, I can't not play football do you know what I mean because of it or I can't not do Ramadan because I play football so I just have to do both so um, yeah looking forward to it it's not going to be easy it's going to be tough mentally as well as uh, physically um, but yeah really looking forward to it 
um, and hopefully a, a very good spiritual month in store. Is that about mapping out a strategy? Because some of my weight can, can, can do without a few meals during the day. Look at you, you, you need calories, you eat, you eat calories. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be about managing it because you can't eat for large the larger part of the day. I think it's 16, 17 hours you can't eat for. So I'd, I'd have to be up at like five o'clock uh, trying to eat as much as possible and feel as much as possible with good foods. And um, you can't eat then till 8 p.m. And then when you do eat, you want to eat good foods again because you don't want to be putting bad stuff into your system because you're malnourished and you're, you're in a caloric deficit anyway. So putting bad foods into your body just your body will just shut down definitely especially while fasting um so it's just all about being professional uh, being single-minded and, and and doing it properly i was going to say probably the biggest month you've had in your football career bearing in mind what you're juggling in terms of on the pitch and off it yeah massive month um and if we can come out on the end of it with um good momentum good form and, and good health then i'll be happy